Welcome to Cedar sinus Women's Guild Simulation Center. My name is Ernesto Noriega, and I'm going to be your tour today. Um, just to give you a little idea about the Women's Guild Simulation Center, it's a 10,000 square feet uh, um, uh, center, educational center. Right now, we are right here in the Barbara Herman's Lounge area. Uh, we're gonna walk you around the, the center, uh, and this center is amazing. We have an intensive care unit, we have an OBGYN room, trauma, two operating rooms, fully, equi fully equipped. Um, we have skills rooms, and I'm also, the last stop we're gonna do is to the virtual reality skills lab. One of the things that we wanna, uh, wanna tell you who uses this sim center is physicians, nurses, uh, respiratory therapists, uh, the, the uh, paramedics, so everyone, and, and it's, what we want to do here is learn. Uh, so what I'm going to show you next is uh, all the patients that we have here are actually mannequins, plastic dolls. So Jeff, my friend over here, he's on the show. This is a room where they can do C-sections. These mom just had triplets. And we're yes. going to go over the difference. Please, Jeff, tell so, us. Yes. Uh, so these are our triplets. Um, we have Super Tori, Joe, and Paul over there. Um, so so uh, with Super Tori, um, when she's in uh, any kind of distress, she can actually uh, Cry. Um, uh, she can actually uh, grow pale, um, and, and she can actually, uh, you know, have seizures and whatnot. Um, uh, the face changes. Uh, with, um, for example, like Paul, um, Paul does the, uh, you know, the actual um, paradoxical uh, breathing. You can actually see him uh, change colors and whatnot. Um, Paul's actually our newest uh, newborn. I think we got him a few months ago, um, and. With Joe, Joe's uh, the most realistic one we got, as you can see, uh, very realistic. So um, we can actually go and try to put Sure, it sure. Out. Let me show you here, yes. Joe. Now, with Joe, uh, this is, uh, is, is uh, anatomically correct, as you can see. And what we're going to do next, I'm going to show you. This is the best way to practice, especially for, for um, pediatricians. And, and nurses who take care of babies. Because before, the only way to practice was some real kids. Uh, so 20 years ago, that meant us, right? <laughs> so you probably had bad experiences. But, uh, <laughs> but over here, no, I'm just kidding. But the best thing over here is just to see uh, with this is the, as you see, as you can see, it's anatomically correct. So a lot of the ways is uh, that you can see here is, uh, for example, um, a ways to use in this scope is to see maybe someone swallow a, maybe a bean, a coin, it'll be kind of a, an emergent procedure where they will have to come and be able to um, uh, uh, pretty much look at the, at, the, at the mouth and be able to use this, this uh, equipment. So that way um, uh, it's, it's, they feel comfortable when they come uh, to treat these patients. Now, the beauty about this center is um, um, not only are we here to train with this equipment, and procedures and, and how to treat these patients, but also how do, how do we do, uh, uh, and, and we emphasize this human caring. Uh, we don't see this just as pl plastic dolls, we see this as patients. So we, we, uh, we care for them, we, as you can see, I cover him up. So we try to re uh, respect them, just as you would with the, with the real patients. We're gonna move next to the trauma ICU room. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thank you. Uh, and, and I would like to, before we move um, next, any questions for the audience in regards to what we just seen? And I'll wait a minute. Well, I'll wait a minute just to see if anybody posts any questions. No questions. So I've been given the go ahead. All righty. So we're gonna go now to the intensive care unit. Now, in the intensive care unit, as you can see here, it's um, this is currently a patient who has an, a, a tube in, in his mouth. And uh, sometimes patient is, uh, when you see them like this, is because they're severely ill. Uh, as you can see here, this is a mechanical ventilator. So everything here is real. The oxygen is real. Uh, what we can do here in this room is where we have intensivists, nurses, uh, um, uh, uh, physicians, residents, medical students. They can come and practice and see uh, how they can troubleshoot. The, uh, this, that's, called, that's called a mechanical ventilator. What it does is it breathes for the patient. So they can see whether you know the patient how the how the patient is doing are they getting stronger can they start breathing on their own or are there complications such as, such as mucus plug maybe there's something that is blocking the tube how do they troubleshoot that so it's a perfect way to, to for us to practice as you can see here we also I have alrighty so uh, sorry we had a little pause over there hopefully now you can hear me I can can hear me and see me better. Uh, there was a little lag, but just to go over a quick overview, this is the, again the intensive care unit where we had a, this is a, a defibrillator, meaning if the patient has a, a heart attack, they can shock the patient. 
I don't know how much you were able to hear, but these mannequins are amazing in the sense that you can do a lot with these mannequins. Uh, as you can see here in the arm, uh, this, this patient had um, an intravenous cannula, meaning you can go ahead and give fluids, and then actually the fluid goes into the patient. Another thing is that you can see here, this patient has a tube in their mouth. Um, the amazing thing with this is that you can, uh, physicians and nurses can get to practice with this mechanical ventilator. That piece of equipment there is breathing for the patient. The nice thing about this is that uh, we can um, uh, use um, throw curveballs, whether to see they can see, okay, the patient is starting to be able to breathe on their own, or they can change the numbers just depending on what the patient is doing. Uh, another thing that this mannequin can do is, uh, is uh, they can do a, have a, what they call a chest tube, meaning it's a tube that goes in the, in the thoracic cavity, and th that happens when sometimes there's air or blood in the, in the, in the, uh, in the thoracic area, in the, in the rib cage, and that's so to help relieve that, get that blood or the air out, so the patient can breathe better. So those are the things that the, the physicians can do and train and doing. So this, again, this is all of this here, equipment is real. The oxygen, everything as you can see. So this is an amazing thing to do. Now I would like to pause for a second to see if the audience has any questions. And thank you for your patience, by the way. No questions, so we'll move along. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna move to... I have a question from Derek. It the says, is there an ECMO machine available for simulation? Yes, there is. And if you're interested, please click in the, in the link below and you can always uh, book a course here at the SIM Center. All right, move next uh, to the uh, operating room. Let's see. Now, we're going to move here to the uh, operating room, surgical suite. As you can see here, also the surgical residence, anesthesia, we get to practice here. By the way, which in, in a way we have, this is open for a MOCA course sometimes too, which is the maintenance of certification for anesthesia. So that's open out there to the public. If you're interested in taking that course, it's an amazing course. Uh, as you can see here, this is one of the uh, mannequins that we do practice surgical procedures with. These mannequins are amazing. You can do multiple things. This, this, this can, can start bleeding. Oh wow, there's bleeding over there. So at this point, we can do several things such as clamping the vessel. We can go ahead and start using the pottery. Uh, at this point, we can start using the pottery. There'll be sometimes complications such as dry. That's the worst case scenario. Like sort of a thing has a fire in the OR. If that's the case, you can always... So as you can see here, everything is real. Obviously, uh, one of the important things from the joint clinician is to be able to have these team kind of exercises uh, because we want to be prepared, right? So um, again, one of the most important things that we emphasize here in the center is patient safety, human caring, and practice, practice, right? Uh, as you can see, all of this is real instrumentation. They get to practice with physicians, residents, anesthesiologists, nurses, the whole team. That is amazing. That, is, that can only happen in a center like this when you can get all of these kind of people at once. At this point, I would like to open uh, questions to the audience. What are the most common procedures you do here? Very good. So we can practice procedures such as laparotomies, meaning just opening the abdominal cavity. Uh, we can do uh, laparoscopic procedures for simulations, high fidelity simula simulations. By high fidelity, I mean uh, they look real. Uh, uh, so the higher the fidelity, the more realistic it looks. I hope that makes sense. So we can do laparoscopic procedures. We can do deliveries either through C-section, so just normal uh, vaginal deliveries. Uh, we can do chest tubes, so we can do a whole bunch of things. Um, the, the, I guess uh, uh, we can say uh, the sky's the limit. Terry wants to know if we can do MRIs. MRIs, as far as MRIs, uh, we do have an anatomash table here, which we can download some. Uh, we don't have an MRI machine per se, but we can simulate something, a scenario that has to do with an MRI, maybe a complication that happened during the MRI. So definitely, if people are interested in, in doing a simulation in regards to a, an MRI procedure, we can do that, definitely. Um, alrighty, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take you to the OBGYN where my friend Claudia is waiting. We have this kid, we, I just been alerted that this kid just came in because he has a uh, difficulty breathing. This is Claudia. Hi, how are you? So with this, with this mannequin right here, we're gonna turn on this monitor. We're gonna see what's happening. Uh, and as you can see, uh, right now we connect, plugging him in. 
uh, just to see exactly what is happening. As we can see here, this baby, we're gonna connect him to the monitor just to see uh, what is happening with this baby. We're gonna see, before we do any procedures, what, 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 what kind of a patient we're looking at over here. As you can see, uh, we're looking at his status over here. Uh, little Joe, little Joe, how you doing? Okay, he's not responding, but he doesn't look very good. All right, Claudia, do me a favor. Go ahead and connect that in the oxygen tank over there. Um, uh, bring it up to 15 liters. Go ahead. And so one of the amazing things over here is that, as you can see, physicians here, they can, and nurses, get to practice with equipment. They get not only to, to see how this works, but, you know, be able to, to manage it, to manage the patient. So at this point, little Joe, we're going to put some oxygen. Please take some deep breaths. Let me step over there on that side. You might come to the other side. Um, at this point... What we can see is uh, that uh, little Joe is not, still not doing very well. One of the important things here is uh, for, for, the, uh, for the physicians or nurses to be able to uh, answer trouble, uh, think of the next steps that they need to do with these patients, right? So at this point, it will be, okay, little Joe, we're going to give you, so as you can see, everything is very realistic. Okay, little Joe, take some deep breaths. All righty, we can actually do all the uh, treatments that you will do in real life. As this case, we're doing an, uh, he's doing a an nebulizing treatment. He's still not doing very good. I don't think he's all too sad, he's doing that well. Uh, you know what, I think this patient is definitely having difficulty breathing. Let's go ahead and give the epinephrine, uh, Claudia. At this point, we can even uh, go to the point of giving an injection uh, in, in the, in the vastus lateralis right there. And so at this point, you can even, even do that with these patients. Um, right, so at this point, you can even inject them. You can make sure you verify. You do you always your, 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 your safety checks. You make sure you're giving it to the right patient. Just looking at all of those little things that have to do, or not little things, that have to do with patient safety. Now, what I'm going to take you next is to Little Joe's uh, mom, which is over here to my to my, to my right. Uh, but before I move on to to mom, are there any questions for, from the audience? Uh, Viri wants to know how often is the simulation center used by already practicing physicians? Ah, very good question. So we have about uh, 22,000 people that come here a year. We have uh, lots of groups that come here, not only physicians, but also some uh, uh, nurses that come here just individually, but also has the uh, interprofessional teams that come in together. So it might be different courses. So depending what the educators see as a needs, we have them um, coming here all the time. Yeah, so not only physicians coming alone, also nurses. So yes, we have a lot of physicians coming here to the center. I hope that answered your question. Any other questions? From the audience no okay uh, and again you can visit our website uh, you can always uh, we also offer a really nice course as a faculty development course uh, for educators that are watching us around the states or worldwide uh, we offer a three-day faculty development course um, which is amazing we teach you how to use the same center uh, how to do uh, simulations how to debrief so it's there's there's a lot that goes behind the scenes so we definitely offer that here uh, now with uh, with the Susie, as you can see here, Susie is um, another nice thing with the, with Susie is that you can listen to her lungs. She can give you different different uh, breath sounds, so you can hear whether she has pneumonia, whether she has asthma. So you can see different things. You can put um, again IVs. We can also see how they can go ahead and, and address, you know, the, the patient has wounds, they can do pulses. So we can create a lot of scenarios for, for, the, for the population out there. Uh, it's interesting, I was just looking, you were asking what kind of cases do we do here? So we can go also, you see, we can, we, this is a, an abdomen, and we can do a different laparoscopic. So this is an abdomen that goes there. Uh, we can put in there and they practice. I'm gonna show you, this is for laparoscopic procedures, but I'm gonna show, show you shortly um, what else we can do with laparoscopic procedures. We're gonna go next to the trauma uh, bay. Uh, in the trauma bay, this is, uh, this is the trauma bay, and it's just exactly how, how it is in the end. What you see here is exactly what we have in the ED. Now with this patient here, but we, the way we have uh, used this room is with, uh, we have used this with the uh, paramedics, the local paramedics here, with the ED department, uh, with the OR, we've done interprofessionals. We have kind of a, taken the patient from the ambulance, bringing them here to the trauma. If they need to go to the OR, we've done that. Um, so it's been great in looking how teams work together, how they communicate. Communication is an important aspect of, of patient care. Um, so here, as you can see, they can do uh, multiple things with, with these mannequins, right? They can apply C colors, they can, they can apply splints, they can put casts, they can uh, put um, uh, catheters, uh, urinary catheters, chest tubes. They can do, uh, even we can uh, very easily, we have a cut suit 
We can even do thoracotomies. We can do many things with this, with this, um, and, and this simulation center. Um, so um, you know, as you can see, we have only all of the equipment. We have the level one. They can do a rapid infusion. We have fiber optics, meaning to see if they can go with the camera looking down the throat. So this is uh, equipment that we, we definitely were very lucky to have. Um, I'm gonna, uh, and I wanna just make sure that uh, from the audience, are there any questions? Miguel wants to know, can nursing students use the Sim Center? The Sim students, uh, if your faculty members are interested, they can contact our center. And, uh, and so if, if uh, that's of interest, uh, we, can, we can definitely work with your school. We'll move next to the, uh, we're gonna go to the virtual reality. I'm just gonna, for about one, one quick uh, minute, I'm gonna show you here, this is our latest station right here. As you can see here, this is a virtual reality. Uh, what you can see here, this is an actual operating room. If you put the, go the, go the, 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 set, the headset, and this is the way now the nurses are practicing. This is the latest module, so you see periopsin, this is what we're using currently. Uh, but what you can use this here, this is an actual operating room. Uh, and the way we use this is how nurses practice in anticipating surgical procedures. What kind of instrumentation need to pass to the surgeon? This is a great modality that has cut down in the number of hours that, 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 that uh, otherwise nurses will have to spend in a, in a classroom. Because here it's very interactive. They know exactly what to, uh, you know, how to anticipate for the next move, always ahead of the surgeon. Uh, and, and then in addition to that, it gives you feedback. So it's a, a, a great way of, of, of learning, uh, um, especially uh, uh, so many instrumentations, surgical instrumentations. Uh, we, we not only have this um, uh, software, we have other softwares. Uh, so that's something that us also we're, uh, we're starting to promote as well. Any questions from the audience? No Carrie, question. Oh. Carrie wants to know if people practice anesthesiology here. Yes, people practice anesthesiology. Uh, we actually um, have the uh, a anesthesia residency program. Uh, so we have uh, anesthesia residents coming every year. Uh, in addition to, we have what we call it, what, what is called a MOCA course. Uh, it's a maintenance of uh, anesthesia certification. Um, so if you're an anesthesiologist out there, yes, we offer that here at Cedar Sinai. Uh, so yes. There's a lot of training. Actually, where we're going next, I'm going to show you. I, I believe one of uh, the anesthesiologists here is right now currently practicing in the, v, in the VR center. I, I think he's still there. He is. Uh, we can ask him some, take advice and ask him some questions. And yes, he's here. Currently, let me just let them know what's happening. Sorry to interrupt, you. You are live Facebook. I don't know, but we don't want to do any Facebook. We want Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be public relations. You all have got to get with it. I've been informed by my colleagues here. <laughs> Very good. Just for the future. Very good. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and be talking. I hope you're fine. No, Very good. not at all. No, no. Okay. Very good. Wait. Do we have a choice? No. I'm <laughs> all right. As you can see here, the question was just posed: Do anesthesiologists so use the center? Here, we'll go back. As you can say, yes. Not only do that, they come here every, almost every day. This is the residents that come and practice what they're doing. They say they're looking with an ultrasound to the heart. They can either do it through the chest or through the throat. As you can see, we have here all their equipment. Yeah, go ahead. You can show them there what they're doing. This is another piece of equipment here. This is for a colonoscopy. Uh, this is the way that the, uh, some of the residents are practicing here. This is the scope. Sorry, okay, I'm being said to a little louder. Sorry, it's just there's a course going on at the same time. I'm trying to be very cautious and, and not to disturb them. This is what happens. This is the way they train. I'm going to go ahead with the scope. All righty. Now, the goal here is that they get to practice and advance in this scope, as you can see here, and they have to pull those balloons. And this is how they get to practice how to use this equipment. Now, I'm going to advance forward. There you go. And then what they have to do is poke those balloons. There you go. Perfect. I used to give you a little idea. Now, let me show you around what, what all the pieces of equipment we have. Uh, all right, let me just put this back here. Right. Another piece of equipment is right here. It's called the Angio Mentor. With this piece of Angio Mentor here, uh, physicians can come here. What, what happens here is, let's say you have a heart attack, right? They take you to the, initially to the ER, but then eventually they have to take you to the cat lab. In the cat lab, 
they don't have to put in either a what, what it looks like it's a little um, uh, it's like a cylinder that opens up in the vessel to open the, the occlusion or, or, or the collapse of the of the of the artery so what they do here as you can see here this is a way that they can practice as you can see going over there how they can get to the different vessels right and so this is a really good exercise on, on not only knowing the anatomy of the heart but also how to how to work this this and they can also this is what you see here is the actual table that they use uh, so this is the x-ray so this is uh, again this is used by our physicians here uh, from the cat lab and, uh, and, and interventions let me show you this side too. All this equipment right now is turned off, but you can see here this is uh, for an arthroscopy yeah. procedure. This is they can do if, if there's a, um, they have to do an arthroscopy, meaning they have to go to the knee, look with the scope, so they can obviously, you can see here, this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty much the real equipment. So then here you can go, you can look at the knee, so you can see here, and you can see what, what the patient currently has. So this is an amazing equipment to practice with. So people that use this is the orthopedic residents, and they come here and obviously they have their goals set by their faculty members. Next, I would like to show you the anatomist table. So you can hear, this is the anatomist table. So be aware of that. You can see a full patient there. Three leaflets or two So you can see, also get to practice and look at the anatomy. This is robotics. This is what they're currently using now, so robotics, which are, it, it's, it's, it's better because of robotic surgery, in a way, it's, it's more precise. Uh, there, uh, it's sort of, you don't have this movement sometimes that we as humans have, right? Especially if you have a cup of caffeine. <laughs> but yeah, but let's take you outside here for a minute just so we can let them finish. So we are now back to the lounge area. And so now we'd like to see uh, if there are any questions from the audience. Sorry if you didn't hear me well, it's just there was a course going on and I didn't want to interrupt them. No? no? Okay, so again, let me show you this real quick over here. This is the uh, Barbara Herman Lounge. As you can see, you're probably wondering, what are these tablets doing over here? Where at the end of the courses, we have a course evaluation. We look not only how was the course, but how was the uh, course delivered by the educator. So this is a way that we make sure that uh, we, we're looking at uh, the quality uh, improvement. Um, so I hope you enjoy this tour. And uh, again, uh, we ha do have a, a, a intranet page, a website that you can visit us and we offer different courses. So um, we also have courses available for, for high school students. It's a, it's a, a um, healthcare immersion course that is going to be offered in the summer. So hopefully you, you will be able to, to meet you and see you. And other than that, have a nice day.